It's this little guy down here. Don't know what this little guy does? Stick around and find out. If you do know what it does, also stick around. So many people are getting into DaVinci Resolve right now, and that is amazing. I really think that a rising tide or rising user base lifts all ships. This is obviously great for everyone who creates DaVinci Resolve tutorials, like me, but it's also great for everyone checking it out for the first time, diving in. There are people who have never edited a video before, starting with DaVinci Resolve, and that gets me very excited. Instead of wasting time on a lower tier software, they can dive right in and learn the fundamentals of video editing in a program that can take them far into their career. And at the same time, there are also professional editors who have been working in the industry for years that are stepping to Resolve from some other options. So much attention is on DaVinci Resolve right now. And so many people are trying to teach themselves this new piece of software that it's not surprising that some things fall through the gaps. And it's easy to get frustrated if you're trying to learn a new piece of software and it feels like some things just don't make sense. And in a program as dense as DaVinci Resolve that really feels like it's five or six different programs smushed together, it's not hard to find examples of really powerful tools that a lot of users won't find for hours if they're just poking around the software on their own. But among all of these tools that I believe a lot of editors just aren't discovering, there is one that is definitely the most useful and I think will help a lot of new editors get up and running faster in Resolve. And that is this little switch right here. I don't know if it actually has a name. I've called it a few different things, a tactile control switch. It's easier to demonstrate what it does. But first we have to talk about some editing basics. I have this clip of Halo gameplay and I'm gonna drop that on my timeline. And if you've spent any time in Resolve, you will know that once that clip is selected, over here in the inspector, I have my main controls for this clip. And the inspector is very cool. It's one place you can look to see all of your controls for any given clip. And we have big sections for transform, cropping, dynamic zoom, our compositing mode, and even some more advanced things like speed change and stabilization. Having sliders or switches and even these numbers to drag around, it gives you a lot of fine control. But on the flip side, it can be a little unwieldy. If I just wanted to shrink down and reposition this video, I would have to come to zoom, pull that down, and then navigate independently on the X and Y axis to just move this clip up into this corner. So the inspector is great, but I've actually seen a lot of people comment online that they wish that they could just grab the image and drag it around the screen. And you'll see that right now, if I move my mouse over the screen and I click and drag, nothing happens. On the surface, it looks like if you wanna change this image, you have to go to the inspector, but you have another option. If I navigate down to this icon and mouse over it, you'll see that it says transform. And if we click that, will instantly get this overlay that you might be used to seeing in some other pieces of software. And now if I grab this image, I can drag it anywhere I want and you'll see that change reflected in the position control in the inspector. And all of these controls do something different. I can drag it around, I can grab the edge to scale just on this X axis or Y axis, or I can grab the corner and scale completely up or down. This bar in the middle, if I grab the top circle, this will be my rotation controls. And this middle dot that we can move, and this is actually changing the anchor point or pivot for this clip. If I were to move this down to the corner and then reposition, if I rotated this, you would see that it is now rotating from that lower dot. I'm gonna click undo in the inspector to change all of this, but you'll see that now we have tactile controls for almost all of our transform options. This is super useful for some of those quick adjustments. If I wanted to copy that same adjustment I did previously of just scaling down, I can just grab the corner, scale down, and drag it right up into the corner. And then if you wanna get this overlay out of the way, you can just click that again and it will toggle off. And I know that that in itself will be very useful to a lot of especially new editors in Resolve, but there's even more. If I click this arrow next to that icon, you'll see that we have have several different options and if I go to the second one crop that replaces these cropping controls also in the inspector so that bounding box looks the same but now if I pull in this side you'll see it is only dragging the left side and it is actually cutting off that image so say for whatever reason I wanted to crop over this mini map I could pull that over and then if I switched back to these transform options you'll see that it is still using the transform options for the entire image, so that's why our pivot is way over here. But I can actually drag that down to that box, and then I can reposition the box wherever I want in frame, 
and do things like rotate that or I have complete independent control over where I cropped that selection. And next we have controls for dynamic zoom. Dynamic zoom is what you often see called the Ken Burns effect, just a slow push in or push out. But I really like the control that this view gives you. If you didn't know that existed and you didn't have any of these views toggled on and you went to your inspector and switched on dynamic zoom, you would instantly see it zoom a little bit. I'm gonna to navigate to a little bit of the different part of this clip to demonstrate. But you'll see that by default, if I toggle off, this screen is static. If I toggle on, we are slowly pulling out over the course of this clip. And in the inspector, we have a control for how much we want to ease that move and a control to swap it so that now we are slowly pushing in. But if we come down to this setting we're messing with and go to dynamic zoom, it'll instantly pop back to see the entire image but now you'll see that you have two boxes, this red outline and this green outline. And the way this works is that wherever the green image is, that is what you will see at the beginning of the clip and at the end of the clip, it will be zoomed in or shifted to where the red outline is. And you have full control to move these boxes anywhere around the screen. So if I wanted a very exaggerated effect, I could come into this red rectangle and scale it all the way down. Then if I toggled off, you'd see that at the beginning, you would see the entire thing but it would be a much more exaggerated zoom into the clip. And this works on a clip basis. So for example, this is 16 seconds long, this quick clip, and it slowly zooms in. But if I were to go a few seconds in and split that clip, those dynamic zoom settings are still the same. So now it is going to execute that move over a much shorter period of time, so it'll be faster. If I toggle that back off, it'll be out, and it'll zoom very quickly into the center. And this is called dynamic zoom, but as you can see, you can set up almost any kind of move with these boxes. If I scale this back up a little bit, move over to this right side of the screen, and scale down this green box and move it over to the left side of the screen, then as you can imagine, if I toggle this off and go back to the beginning of our clip, we'll see where the screen box is, and over time, we will zoom in and slide over to the right to where the red box is. Nothing is there right now. But if we extend this clip a little bit, you would see that where you start out, and it zooms in over to this right side of the screen. And this is very zoomed in. So you can see that this would be very effective for just a quick, slow zoom in or push out. I use this all the time whenever I need to quickly animate photos in a scene, but also you can do some more dynamic stuff as well. And underneath the dynamic zoom options, we have open FX overlay. We'll turn that on and nothing will change for now. But to demonstrate this, I'm gonna make sure our effects library is open, go to open effects and scroll down and I'm going to grab dent and just drag that right onto our clip. And you'll see instantly, you'll see the effect this clip is having, but you'll see that we also have some of these controls. And just like before in the inspector, we have manual controls for these things, the position on screen. I'll toggle this control off for now so you can see. This position on screen and the size of this dent and some of those things. But if we toggle this back on, you'll see that it gives us those controls like we had for transform. So now I can just grab this and move it anywhere quickly on screen and change the strength as well. And as I do that, you will see that reflected in the inspector as well. It's important to note that not all open effects have these sort of tactile controls. A lot of them like blurs, you just drop on and see how it works and you can tweak the settings in the inspector. But especially some of these warp effects do have controls that you can use on screen just like this. And the next category we have is fusion overlay. And this is very similar to open effects overlay. I'll click that on and then I'll go to effects and scroll down and I'm going to grab the effect that I use in these videos. This is the effect that takes this camera, my full face cam, and shrinks it down into the corner of the screen for my picture in picture view while I'm showing off the software. So I'm actually gonna grab that and drag it right onto my clip. And you'll see it shrinks it down and puts it in the corner. If I pull this up a layer actually and go to my generators and grab a solid color and set that underneath it, something a little brighter, you'll see that I actually have a little drop shadow here as well and you'll probably see that in in the tutorial you're watching now. But, but if I click on that viewer again, you'll see that I have these set of green controls and that is because of this fusion overlay. Just like before in the inspector, we could come over to effects and have controls over this position and size. But if I toggle this on, then we can change the size and position of this just by dragging it around the screen. And because of the way this effect works, it actually works hand in hand with the main transform effects. So if I were to go back to a video and change these position, it would actually change this position of the footage before it gets 
shrunken down and slid into this box. So we have one set of controls for inside the box, and then these tactile controls to move the box around anywhere we want or change the size. And lastly, in this overlay menu, we have annotations. These are a few different ways to make a quick note or to set a marker for you to revisit later. This would be especially useful if you were working in a collaborative project or if you had a second editor that you were swapping out work with. Even if you were sending a project to someone else, you could use these tools to make a note of something in a scene and send it away and another person would see these notes. Or you can use them even to just set reminders for yourself. If there was something in the scene I wanted to make a note of, I could simply draw a box around it or select this button to point an arrow to it or even three versions of this squiggly line control to circle something I think is important. And of course we can change this color as well. Now don't freak out, this isn't actually painted onto your image. If we start sliding forward, you'll see that it instantly goes away and it only shows when we are over that frame. And that is because it is tied to this marker. If we slide the marker forward, you'll see that when we get to it, we see those notes. And if we're done, we can just select that marker and click delete to get rid of that. And all of this different functionality control over your transform settings and cropping and your open effects and fusion effects and marking up your image like this is all hidden behind this little icon. And at any point you can change between these or toggle them on or off. I've seen people specifically ask for this feature to be added in Resolve and it's already there. And a lot of editors just don't know about it. So if you were one of those editors that didn't know this exists, I hope this is really helpful to you. I hope it speeds up your process. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if it was useful to you. That would really help me out. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Thanks. I'll see you next time.